getting plants to market always involved the transport over some water. I traded with my factor in London, Peter Collinson, across the North Atlantic, and that was a dangerous trade. So many of our boxes were packed into bilge water-filled holes that rotted them as soon as they left the docks here in America. What we discovered was that the best way to ship plants was to put them in a box the size of 11 by 15 by 8 inches. And that was generally the size of the space available under the captain cabin's bed. And if you got to know captain, ship captains during the day, you would ask them, you would treat them royally, you would ask them to dinner, you would give them food and host them for major events so that you'd hope to gain their attention and favor. And then if you were shipping a box of roughly those dimensions of seeds and pods and rooteds and, and cuttings, you were allowed to ask for that specific space under the captain's cabin's bed. You know, most men who were ship's captains in the day didn't like to go into their cabin and find that their bed was damp and that their pillow was wet. Also, the other thing you needed to be cautious of was that there is no such thing as a rat deserting a sinking ship in the middle of the ocean. And what do rats eat on an ocean-bound vessel in a leaking wooden ship, but the seeds that you were shipping. So the other advantage of being in the captain's cabin was that there was always a captain's cabin's cat. And the cat would eat the rats, but would also try to scratch in the molded material that you were putting the seeds in. So it was good to put lats on the side of the box so that the cat couldn't get into the scratch. So a captain's cabin cat's needs lats.